uh, today I would like to talk about the gametogenesis but before that allow me to um, recall the cell cycle so that we can we can easily remember the gametogenesis by understanding this cell cycle so cell cycle is the ability of the parent cells to produce the similar genetic uh, similarly the genetically similar to the daughter cells so basically it just produced the same uh, number of genes and it's just like a cloning so cell cycle can be divided into two which is the mitosis and also the interface so this is the interface so interface can further divide into growth one as synthesis and growth two so cells can either goes to the resting state of uh, in the growth zero or returning back to the G1. So in G1 what happened is that this is the parent cells. So what happened during at this point is that it there is a growing of the cellular components. Everything will be duplicated except for the except for the uh, the chromosomes it will remain the same the chromosome the chromatids will remain the same uh, only the enlargement of the cell and cellular replications and at this point usually um, there's a medications that can actually stop this uh, process like uh, for example actinomycin Mycin D okay. and the cells goes into the synthesis DNA synthesis phase so whereby at this point the cells is already big and there will be a duplications of the genetic uh, information so the duplications of the chromosomes okay and now uh, this phase is, takes about eight hours and the DNA replication synthesis takes only about six to eight hours. And think of medication. A lot of um, uh, chemotherapy drugs actually attacks here. Take for example, um, antimetabolites, methotrexates. So we know that to produce a DNA, a cells need a folate, right? So folate will be converted into dihydrofolate, and for the reduced to tetrahydrofolate so MTX works here where it stop the dihydrofolate reductase to become tetrahydrofolate because tetrahydrofolate is the component of the purines to produce purines like guanine and adenine right so when they eat stop here so there will be no productions of the DNA DNA so after that uh, the cells will go into G2 Growth two, what it does is it's gonna check, counter check and balance, and repair any genetic aberrant before it gets into the mitosis here. So mitosis consists of PMAT, PAMAT, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So in prophase, what happened is that so here we have a check and balance. In prophase, what happens is that the chromosome will be condensed and the centrosome will attach to the centrio centrioles. And in metaphase, it's just the early phase of the prophase, right? It's just the early stage of the mitosis. And metaphase, the chromosomes will align at the metaphase plate, preparing for the next stage. And the centrosomes attached to the centrioles. And what happened in the anaphase, it will move away. So, because of the shortening of the microtubule, the kinetal cores, it's shortened, so it will attract to its each pole here. So, separating these chromatids. And last but not least, the telophase, the formations of the nuclear membrane. 
and also cytokinesis the cell divisions so cytokinesis here so now we have two identical daughter cell right so this is basically what happened in uh, mitosis in myosis actually the same thing happened but the myosis actually only happens in gametes because we want to reduce the number of the genes from uh, diploid to haploid and that, that is why we have the metaphase 1 and metaphase uh, myosis 1 and myosis 2 both of this can have the same phase which is PMAT1 1, 1 PMA T2 the same exact thing but just to make it into haploid so now let's go to the gametogenesis so we have two types of gamete so we have spermatogenesis and oogenesis so for spermatogenesis, it begins with the diploid, uh, and we call it spermatogonium. Togonium, and it will underwent a mitosis to produce uh, primary spermatocytes with the same exact number of the gene genetic information. So to produce primary spermatocyte so that is why we call this sperma to cytogenesis so to produce this spermatocytogenesis is in the question in the past, uh, past MRC UGs and then uh, after underwent the spermatocyte um, uh, my mitosis it will produce a secondary spermatocyte to side uh, by myosis one. So it's already half the number here, and after that. They will have uh, mysis two, mysis two, and produce the spermatids. So this is the spermatids with the haploid number as well. So that is why. Uh, here is spermatocyte so this is what we call spermato spermatidogenesis genesis okay and after that uh, it will mature it and become the spermatozoa that will eventually uh, fertilize the egg so we have the acrosomal cap here we have the nuclear with haploid and we have the mitochondria the centrioles and the nuclear envelope down there and we have the tail so just to recall the WHO classifications 2010 for SFA we have count uh, first of all the volume volume of uh, 1.5 mils and we have the count of 15 ten, times 10 power of 9 per meal and we have the mortality morphology about 4% motility 40% and we have the viability 40% as well um, viability you can grade the sperm into four grades grade one two three and four the grade one the sperm always move forward straight grade two 
it's still moving but haphazardly. Grade 3, it's moving but only the tail at the same place. At grade 4, present but dead. So we need about viability of 40%. So let's go to, uh, to eugenesis. So as just like spermatogenesis, we have the plate number of eugenesis. So its name is Ugonium. And it underwent the mitosis to produce the, uh, what we call it, a primary oocyte with a similar genetic uh, number. And then after that, it went down to mysis 1, mysis 1 to produce a haploid, one haploid. And this is called the primary polar body, the first one. And, oh. and so this is the secondary oocyte. Underwent another process and producing uh, which is called myces 2. And producing the utids. Permatids, utids, and also second polar body. So the question that remain in my mind is what is the functions of this, this polar body? Because the first polar body can uh, underwent mysis two and produce another two polar body. So in total we have three polar body. I leave the uh, question about the functions of the polar body later. So, what's the difference between eugenesis and also spermatogenesis? In eugenesis, in spermatogenesis, it takes the whole process occurs in seminiferous tubules, and it takes only seventy four hours. So, the difference between the uh, spermatogenesis and eugenesis is eugen it's already completes within seventy four hours for spermatogenesis, but in eugenesis, it stops somewhere. The first one, the ugonium, will stop at, uh, as we know, we have uh, in utero about 7 million. In utero at birth, 2 million. And then during puberty, reduced to 500,000. And ovulation to about only 500. So there are two stops here. The first one, during the mysis one. Uh, prophyx one. The primary oocyte will stop until at puberty. Okay, and another stop is in the mysis two in metaphase two, where uh, only five hundredths of the secondary oocyte will able to uh, actually develop to utids and uh, ovum after the fertilizations okay so let's move further to